Hello everyone, welcome to my very first build log. Um, here is a system that I'm building for myself um, due an upgrade. Uh, as some of you may know, followers of the channel, um, my previous system is a Phenom 4 X, uh, so Phenom 2 X4 955 processor. Wow, sorry, my mind went blank then. Uh, so I'm well and truly overdue a pro, uh, an upgrade. Um, this came on offer. This is the Ryzen 7 2700. This came on offer on Scan for £210 posted, and I couldn't say no. So because of that, I bought it, bought everything else you see in front of me. So to pay that, we've got the uh, Gigabyte uh, Aorus X470 Ultra Gaming motherboard. So we're going for that with this. I want to go X470 so I can do some upgrades in the future. Uh, X470 is more likely to um, support uh, Ryzen 3000 chips when that does come out. It's more likely, it's not guaranteed, it's just more likely to uh, support it. Um, we've got over here an EVGA 750GQ, I look what the uh, two there were, fully modular gold, 80 plus gold um, power supply. Uh, I wanted to go 80 plus gold. Uh, the one I actually wanted was a Rio Toro one, but it was out of stock. But that being said, I still think I got a fantastic um, PSU here. Um, we are going to be putting this into the 50 pound case. And by the time this comes out, the review for this case will probably be up. And it'll be up top right hand side of your screen, uh, or that side, uh, I think it's that side looking at the camera screen. Uh, that is the Stormforce. I'm just looking at it again. I had to do this on the review. It's called a Loop Ventus um, and it's in white. It also comes in black, but I say it comes in black. I haven't seen this in stock since I bought it at all. I'll still leave a link in the description below um, if you want to have a look at it. Both sides, tempered glass, and it's got five RGB fans in it. So I thought. We'll give it a go. I may end up changing the case in the future. For RAM, uh, I, I splashed out here quite a bit. I got 32 gigabytes, so it's a two by 16 gigabytes, 3200 megahertz uh, Vengeance LPX RAM. Um, reason I went for 32 is because, again, with RAM prices at the moment, they seem to be coming down, and that was just over 200 pounds. I think I wrote it down here. Um, RAM was 203 pounds, so, I couldn't say no, and the SSD, I went for the, um, I wanted NVMe. Not a great choice when it comes to NVMe drives, but when I say NVMe, I actually mean NVMe, not just M.2, NVMe, which means it's faster. So I got the 970 uh, Samsung Evo uh, drive, it's 250 gigabytes, and that cost me, uh, reason I went for that one, 64.99, so 65 pound. All in all, everything that you see here in front of you cost me uh, £730, so uh, I thought it was quite good. Obviously, there's no GPU. You can see there's no GPU here. I haven't decided what GPU I want, so for the time being, I'm stealing my Radeon HD 7950 from my current setup. My current workload doesn't really require a good graphics card, it requires a good CPU. Um, but that being said, I'm willing to spend about three to four hundred pounds on a CPU, but in that price point, there's a lot of options and not a great deal that differentiates them. Um, I like the idea of AMD for the FreeSync. I know Nvidia does FreeSync now, but it's kind of sketchy at the moment, whether or not fit uh, what it does and doesn't support. But anyway, we're going to go in now, we're going to zoom in, and you'll get a little clip of me putting it all together. I hope you enjoy this uh, build, and obviously I'm going to be talking through it as we go. So let's get to it. And here we have the motherboards. Obviously inside it's wrapped. Oh, I'm really sorry about all the noise. And then underneath, we've got all the motherboard accessories. For now, I'm just going to grab the uh, back plate to put it in the case and we'll put all this back together we'll have a look a bit later on as to what else is in the box but yeah you get the uh, you get the point 
I'll take out the wrapper and we'll clip back to this. Before I open it up, I actually did think I'll show you. So obviously you've got the back plate to pull it into your, um, the IO shield chassis to put it in your motherboard. You've got two packets of these, two packets, both of them are exactly the same. The SATA cables, you've got one 90 degree in both packets and one straight and the other side is straight as well. So it's good to have four SATA cables. There's some sort of um, RGBW, it's actually an RGBW cable there. I'll have a look at the manual a bit later on what that actually is. Um, not fully sure what this cable is. Uh, looks like some sort of sensor on the end, but not fully sure. Again, I'll look at the manual, hopefully I'll come back. And then you've got the G connector. Now, whoop, okay. I don't know what happened to my camera now. Now the G connector is, Gigabyte do some weird thing. They've got a G connector on there. You plug it in and then you do your front panel connectors into this rather than directly into the motherboard. And I'm hoping that these focuses are getting on you correctly. So yes, and then obviously you've got your multi-angle uh, installation guide that shows you how to install the CPU cooler and uh, like your stage one slot and then your actual manual there, which we will be referencing. And inside there, there is the CD, which we will not be using. Uh, obviously we need to reference this for the slots. My friend already has this, so I've got a good idea of what slots go where. Right, let's get it out the bag and we'll cut back. And here's a quick overview of the Gigabyte Aorus X470 Ultra Gaming motherboard out of the packaging. Um, I've already noticed straight away, the RAM slots I was, was correct. It's listed on the right here, four, two, three, one. So slot four, slot two, slot three, slot one. As you know, in most uh, times that you do um, installation with RAM, you do it in every other, so i.e. one and three or two and four. Well, one and three is gonna be these two down here, so that's where my RAM's gonna end up being, is down there. I'll check with the uh, manual just to make sure. Um, at the bottom here, we've got six SATAs. Uh, I'm looking around here, we've got system fan pump. So if you've got pump there, uh, fan five pump, you've got five uh, fan six and pump again, so you can have two pumps here. Um, at the top here, you've got system fan one right next to your eight pin um, power supply for your CPU. Obviously you've got your uh, motherboard supply down here. Bit of um, heat shields across the top of all the VRAM. Um, Sorry, the um, power, oh, I forgot what it's actually called. I'll put it down the bottom if I remember afterwards. Uh, and then obviously at the back here, this, I knew buying this um, turntable would uh, be handy, but that's what you've got at the bottom. So you've got uh, two uh, 3.1 ports, that like maybe four 3.1 ports looking at that. And then you've got four 2.1s. Well, there's another red one there. So maybe a fifth 3.1, and then you've got a type C at the bottom and then all your audio uh, components there as well. Um, another reason why I bought this board over any other, two, uh, the first two slots are um, shielded, so it'll help with the sag. I think my card's gonna sag regardless it, that I'm currently using because of the type of card it is. And then M.2 there, which has got a heat shield. Again, the reason why I bought it because I will be fitting the Samsung Evo M.2 underneath that slot. And then you've got all your audio over there. I'm no professional into all that. You've got another load of fans down the bottom, your USB 3.0, uh, 3.1, I think, maybe. Um, uh, if I find out a bit later on, I'll add it down the bottom, if I remember. And then you've got your 12 volt um, RGBW. So this uh, supports uh, at the bottom. Oh, okay, I don't know if you can, you can just see it in that frame there. Right at the very bottom we're talking about here. And then obviously you've got system audio and all your other connectors right at the bottom of the motherboard. Nice looking motherboard. This fit the CPU. So just off to the side now, you can see the Wraith cooler. And here is the processor. First jobs first is we need to take off these four to allow um, the Wraith cooler to be installed. These brackets are for the older AM4 um, type coolers, a lot of them still use the little hooks that go on there. If you've got a cooler like that, it is still more than good enough for these. 
Um, I may even end up fitting this back on. Uh, so I'm gonna have to keep this very safe. It'll go in the box, obviously. And um, this may go back on if I get a new cooler, uh, but that I'll have to decide on. Um, there was supposed to be a company, uh, I won't say their name, uh, sending me out a uh, cooler for my very first sort of sponsored um, slot, but unfortunately I haven't heard from them in about a month or so, so I don't actually fully know what's going on with them. I know all these huge companies are very busy, but it's nice to know that uh, I was considered at least for sponsorship. This is not sponsored in any way. I bought all this out of my own money. Um, don't know why I'm opening that. So let's get the uh, Ryzen 7 installed and I'll zoom in with the camera. Right, so first things first, lift this retention arm up. And then when you open up the case, uh, come on camera, very bottom left there you see a little triangle. Now on the motherboard, every motherboard has like a little triangle and this one is being cut out in the very top right there. It's like a little, just a little bit um, cut out. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. So what you do is you line up, I'm trying to get this out of the case as carefully as I can because I don't want to bend any of these chips. So I'm going to take my time here, not drop it. What you do is you line up that triangle with that triangle very, very carefully. Drop it into place, give it a little wiggle, which that's not moving anyway. And then you replant, clamp this retention arm down and there we go. That is now a Ryzen 7 2700 installed into the X470 Aorus motherboard. Now, let's just pull this out. At the very bottom there uh, of this uh, Wraith, I believe it's the RGB one. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I bought it purely for the motherboard. Uh, for the CPU, I meant, not on the motherboard. So there's some thermal paste underneath there. I'm just having a close look at that now. Do I need to remove anything or is that straight in? Okay, let's just line this up now. So what we're gonna do is line it up in all four corners. Uh, turns out that the thermal paste is on there and it looks like it's already exposed uh, because the basically the box has this sort of like in cave in it. Uh, to protect it. So that is over the top. We get our screwdriver, uh, Phillips head, or as I call it, a posi. So we'll give that two turns here, opposite corners. I've decided to put the AMD logo on this side. You can go either the top or the bottom. Uh, reason being is because I think the cable management would be a bit better. So let's just give that a good tight down and uh, allow it to clamp in. This is the reason why you need to keep that back plate in place. Um, so there we go, that is going down. And then this corner. Right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go corners. Um, so this one to that one, that one to that one up there. And then we'll come back after this. Right, uh, I just realized I didn't actually end that. So we'll give it, go around, just make sure it's nice and tight. Yep, I can, can't turn that one. Don't give a lot of pressure, just enough. And uh, just make sure that it can go in. Again, I don't know if I said at the start of this video, I'm no PC professional uh, builder. So take uh, my word at a pin, pinch of salt. And uh, like I said, I'm not professional. So that's that installed. Let's get it in the case now, and then we'll get on with the rest of it. One more thing while, uh, before it goes into the case. Um, I've already started prepping it. Uh, we best install the RAM. Um, if we have a look at the manual there, it says channel A is slots two and four. And if you remember, it went, goes four, two, three, one. So it's these two slots on the left, not the far right ones that I said. So just so you guys can actually see, channel A, slots two and four. Slots one and three, so channel B. So let's just um, get our Corsair uh, 2x16 kit of um, uh, Vengeance, LPX Vengeance, and then we will install this. And typical, the thing is awkward to get off. I should have prepped this. Right, there we go. Top is off. There is our two sticks of RAM right there. This 
pop these two out. If anyone actually knows different to what I am reading in the manual, maybe I'm reading that completely wrong, please let me know. Also, CPU fan header is actually just, just by there. It's, uh, there's two headers there, not in the top corner that I previously said. Um, I referenced the manual for that and uh, yeah, I was a bit surprised. So, installing this, DDR4, there is a little slot there and you've got to line it up. So this goes in that way. If it goes in the wrong way, the slot is too far up that way than what it is. There's this little plastic line across here. So we'll go into the first slot. Luckily, the cable is not in the way. Push down to so get two clicks. You've probably seen this a hundred times on many other channels, how to install a RAM as I have. Um, I've also done this uh, a handful of times myself. That is that installed. Now, let, now let's get it in the case. First thing you do is to install the IO shield. I've already taken out the packaging and what you gotta do is you gotta line it up um, to set the camera focusing on that. I know the audio is at the bottom half of the case. So we are gonna stick that towards the bottom half. And what you do is you slide it up move any cables out of the way that is currently in a way on this case. All these fans come pre-installed, uh, may end up having to remove them. Uh, line it up and then just gently clip it in, go all the way around, and then, there we go, that is fully installed. Now we are to install the case, the uh, motherboard. Right, as you can see, there's some pre-fans pre-installed on this case. I've taken this module area here, which is for um, five and three quarter drives, because I'm not going to use them. So I've taken that away. I've installed uh, the three extra motherboard screws. Six were installed, but the three were the standoffs, I mean, not the screws. Hopefully these cables won't get in the way. We'll find out now, any second, because here goes the motherboard. Line it up with that IO shield at the back. That cable is getting in the way. Let's lift it on top. Hopefully we don't have to fully uninstall it. And now just push it back. And I can see, I'm looking around this top one. There we go. They are all lined up. Now what we gotta do now is get the screws and screw it down. Before I screw it down, I probably best take this plastic wrap off. I know you guys like to hear uh, plastic wrapped here, so let's try and get this off. Very, very unimpressive, I know. So there's a plastic wrap taken off. Uh, in fact, there's a tiny bit by there that got caught and we will now install it. Now, I've pre-installed most of them apart from these two. Um, this motherboard, uh, the, sorry, the case, came with like these two different styles of screws. They look very similar, but these like uh, smaller and indent a little bit. And these are the ones I'm supposed to be using. I did start using the other ones and I was wondering what was happening. And that was the very first time I've actually dropped a screw. Luckily it landed there. Uh, so what we do is check them in and just screw them into the standoffs. Normally, sometimes I should say, this one here um, comes with like a sort of like, it sticks up a little bit, so it's, it helps the motherboard stay in place. Um, I've already looked at the back of the motherboard and everything looks straight on the IO shield. So there we are just, Nice and snug, not too tight. And just make, yeah, there we go. So that is the motherboard installed. Let's get the M.2. I could have done the M.2 beforehand and I probably should have done in hindsight, uh, but here we go. We, we'll get the NVMe drive installed now. Right, let's get the M.2 drive installed. I should have done this previously before I put the motherboard in, like I said earlier on. So let's just undo this screw. This is the very first time I've ever installed an M.2 drive, so I'm being very cautious here. And 
I know there will be some standoffs to install, which I need to now find. So underneath there, we have the uh, heat sink for the standoffs and let's just have a look and the motherboard parts and we'll see if we can find this standoff. Right, so I've had to pinch the uh, standoff from the bottom one here. So you could just see it down here, I've now moved it up there. Uh, it doesn't look like it comes with a second one for some reason. So let's just push that in. There we are, that's now firmly slotted in. And this is the second time I've tried installing this. Like I said, it's the very first time I've ever installed an M.2, so I didn't really know, wasn't sure. You just have to push it in. It didn't feel right when I uh, done it just now. Push that down. Get the little screw. Oh, that's just moved. All right, get the little screw. Ah, oh, come on. This is so fiddly, this little screw is. Now we will screw this in. Uh, I also, to unscrew the, um, the standoff in, I had to use a flathead uh, screwdriver, uh, posi. So like, it does look like it could be a posi or a Phillips head as, uh, as you would call it. But here we are. Make sure that's nice and tight and not too tight. Let's now peel off the, uh, the pad, the thermal pad. Uh, obviously it's too big for the old thing. Uh, where did it go again? Must have gone, there, there you go, went in there. Let's line that up because it is a sticky pad at the end of the day. Straight down and we'll get the second screw and we will screw that into there with again your Phillips. Oh, it would be better, admittedly, is this is magnetic. But I'll screw this in now and then we'll come back after this take. Installed now, as you can see, that was so fiddly. In the end, I just put it in my fingers and I screwed it in. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. So a tip for you if you're trying to screw that in, do it with your fingers and then use a screwdriver. Right, so it's the next day from the last clip. Um, I had to stop building yesterday. Um, I also apologize, not only for the birds squeaking as I'm talking. Um, you may have recalled earlier on in the video, I said about the RAM slots, uh, where the manual, if I can get the uh, camera to zoom in, there you go. The manual states um, for uh, two and four. Well, that's what I thought it was. But if I flip the page over, if only I'd done that, right at the very top, see the camera will focus in a bit more. There is a diagram and at the very bottom, when using dual channel mode, we recommend DDR4 slots one and two. So I have now moved them into slots one and two. Uh, my camera just turned off and on then, that was really strange then. Right, so that's everything now installed. So we have the RAM, the CPU, the CPU CUDA, the motherboard, the memory, all installed. Obviously the case fans are pre-installed. So now the only thing really to do is to get the EVGA 750GQ um, 80 plus uh, gold power supply in. And that is going down here. So I'm going to try and find a good camera angle for you. Again, sorry about the bird and we will install that and then we'll do all the cable management later on. Just thought I'd give you a bit of a look on the back. So here's all your different uh, ports. So you've got your VGAs, um, uh, one, two, uh, four. Uh, your CPU two, CPU one. So if you've got a motherboard that requires two CPU headers. Um, your Purif one, I'm not too sure what that is. SATA two, SATA one, SATA three. So it's three SATA ports. And uh, sound quite cool, there's this eco uh, button at the bottom. Not percent sure what that actually does. Um, I'm gonna have to read a manual on that. And so yeah, I'm gonna install it fan down because the filter's on the bottom in like this and I'm gonna screw it in and we'll be right back. Right, so what I've done is I've already plugged in one cable here. That's going up to the CPU at the very top left. It's gonna be very awkward to plug in. I've also pulled uh, the USB for the front panel out of there and through this one because these two are USB ports here. There's another USB one there. Unfortunately, it's ketchup and mustard, so I may 
uh, put some black uh, insulation tape or something over there. USB 3 and then the front panel connectors here, uh, which will require this, if you remember this on the motherboard. So that'll plug in there, I believe. I'm gonna to have to read the manual quickly on that. And then one last thing, I've got another KBU, which is uh, basically all these little, um, was it Molex? Um, so they can go in there. That's purely for the RGB on the uh, front. So let's um, try and tackle the CPU connector first, because it's very, very awkward. Okay, I realize I'm gonna be blocking this mostly. Um, right, so this is pulled through. But unfortunately, it's gonna to have to go that way. And um, let's make sure this is nice and flat on the back. That may help us out. And is gonna to have to, can we maybe go around and then we can 90 degree around? It's split into two four pins. It's an eight pin that requires, some CPUs only require a four pin, hence why it's split into two. Um, I wonder if I can see through the top here. Right, so if I get the one side in, this is so awkward. I do apologize if I'm getting in the way. So that is one side in, and now I'm trying to pull as much feed as I can through. And then, um, try to do this by feel as well. But I don't want to damage it. Right, we may end up doing a cut, jump cut here. Any minute. Okay, fixed. All I done was I put it flat. Uh, what well, I mean is the case completely flat on the desk and I literally uh, used my hands and uh, pushed it in. So it's uh, in nice. Right, now that's plugged in. Let's get the um, 24 pin plugged in. As you can see, it's 20 plus four. Some other boards only require a 20 pin. And this one obviously requires a 24. Make sure it's nice and snug. I just fitted this just now and didn't put the four in uh, with the 20. So this is the second attempt. I am honest with you guys. There's no point in me adding that clip in because it was just me messing around with it. So, right. Bottom half is in, top half is now in, and push, push, he is now really tight. Again, I do apologize my head, and the clip is now in, so the clasp is now on. And now let's just get him in as far as we can, just to tidy him up. Right then, let's do the uh, front panel on the bottom. So as you can see, I've already started HD audio. Yes, I said USB earlier on, but it's actually HD audio. Two USB 3.0, uh, 2.0s, or whatever they are. <laughs> yeah, 2.0s, and the 3.0 is installed. Um, the power um, uh, front panel connector is all through. And this G connector is actually quite surprising. This is why I've stopped this year. Um, so if you look on the side, you got speakers plus and negative, power plus negative, uh, power LED plus negative. On this side, uh, HD plus negative, um, res plus negative, CI it looks like, and power LED plus negative. All it is is really a guide. You just put the cable in there, uh, you can put them all in it, and then push the whole lot on there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it off camera because it's gonna be a lot of tedious work. Right, so the G connector is all plugged in. So uh, hard drive reset. Um, the CL uh, CI, sorry, is chassis indicate uh, instruction header apparently, which I don't have. There's a three-way power um, LED here, um, which is basically for yellow, purple uh, status um, uh, LEDs. On the other side, then um, you got your standard power um, switch, your power LED there. And then you've got speaker um, cables here, which is a four-way speaker, which I clearly am not using. So let's uh, just get this plugged in. So we'll go this way around and then push them in. And I seriously hope I've done this correctly. So now, as far as I'm concerned now, the motherboard is fully plugged in. 
Now, I'm debating, let's just zoom out, I'm debating on removing these three um, all together because I'm not going to be using them. So I'm kind of thinking, what's the point of having it? Do I go with a clean look or does it break things up? Uh, let me know. So I'll just zoom out a bit more so you can actually see the whole case. So let me know what you think. I've obviously taken the bit at the top. Sorry about the wobbly camera. And now let's swing this right old mess around for you to see the mess that I've got to clean up. Sorry about the uh, camera again. So I've got to somehow clean this lot up. Yeah, be right back. So I feel a little bit of a dirt right now. Number one, remember I said about the um, M.2 slot I had to steal uh, the standoff. There is actually standoff uh, supplied in the box. I found that whilst packing up. Um, I've also taken out the cable ties and I don't know what else, some sort of cloth uh, uh, whilst uh, cleaning up. There's also this speaker. Um, not 100% sure what that is. Couldn't see anything in the manual about that. So I'm a bit weary on to what that one is. But what you might now notice is there's now a cable coming through. And why is that? Because I'm a derp and I did not install the graphs card. All right, this is an older one. Um, so we now need to uh, install this. So uh, line up with the slots. So there's these two here top one and then obviously the one below it so we'll just take both of these out and we'll get it plugged in so yeah, yeah. so obviously uh, remember I said what the perif was on there it's peripheral obviously um, so perif means peripheral in this so we'll just slot this behind there line them up on the top card would probably help if I opened that up. And then Bird is making a hell of a racket behind me. As you can hear, he is now clipped into place. And actually, there's a bit of dust on there, so I'll end up cleaning that off before, uh, before I put it on. I literally ripped it out of the uh, other computer yesterday, put it on the side, and didn't even think to clean it. Right, so let's lift him up. Drop the screwdriver. Sorry about that. Bang. Um, he is nutted up. There's a little bit of sag, as you can see, but it's not as much as it was in the other case. Um, that um, metal plate, metal bracket on the uh, top PCIe has uh, seriously helped. Right. So, this is a 4 plus 6. So, I've obviously gone for the... Um, uh, 8 plus 6, should I say, not 4 plus 6. So what we're going to do is get this one. Though he's already separated, but still, we will plug him. Actually, we'll do this one as a 6. So we'll do the 6 first, because he's closer to the end. So that's one in. The 8 is somewhat already connected. This is plugged into VGA1 on the um, power supply. So line him up, push him in, nice click. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to have that. And then we'll pull him through. It would help if I was actually pulling the correct cable. And then let's just sort of like tuck him in. So he's sort of hidden. How's that look? Um, Right, let's get around back to the back. I already started a bit of cable management. I don't want to do it all on the um, case. Unfortunately, that grass kind of looks absolutely hideous in here. But there's not a lot I can do about it for the time being. I am planning on getting a new one. Leave suggestions down below as to what you reckon I should get. My budget's up to around 400 quid, very maximum. And that is very maximum, so uh, keep that in mind. I know I can get a Vega 64 for 400 quid, and I'm very tempted by it. Let me know in the description. Right then, so we're on to day three of this build. Yesterday I barely had any time, so I did what happened yesterday. Today I was gonna continue with the cable management. In fact, I wanna do that a bit later on. But I was talking to my friend in work about this earlier on, and he did point something out to me. First things first, 
test it before the cable management. He had a good point. So, screen share, power supply turned on. Eco mode is turned off, whatever eco mode is, I'm still not too sure. Screen is on, as you can see. Let's try them. We have lights. Ooh, blue lights all around. RGB um, red ring around there. Are we gonna get a post? You can see blue strips down the side. Come on, give me a post. This is always the worrying bit. All right, HDMI cable is plugged in. Mouse and keyboard I've plugged in just for the test. Yes! Yes! Oh, um, reboot and select, what's that? So I'm now spamming the delete key. Right, so we are now into the bar. Let me come around to your side. BIOS has been reset. Please reconfigure your BIOS items if needed. Um, memory, system, peripherals. I may end up skipping this and NVMe RAID is disabled. Okay. Uh, I have no idea, okay, boot option. Yep, so the Samsung it is reading as boot option one. I'm assuming it's just because nothing is pre-installed, which is what I'm gonna do at the end. So that was a bit of a panic, four minutes of a clip for no reason. Right, let's uh, do the cable management and I'm gonna install Windows later. Right, so uh, what I've now done, as you can see, I've removed the free SSD uh, base from the front. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I think about it, so, I'm relying on you a uh, lot to let me know uh, what you think. Um, also, there's been one slight change. Uh, well, I say change, it's actually an addition. I was gonna add the um, hard drives from my old system into this, but then I thought, mm, why, uh, why get potential failures? So, I have bought my screen is literally just turned off. There we go. Come on camera. A Toshiba 3 terabyte P300 uh, hard drive. This is a 7200 spin hard drive. So I'll be installing that in the rear. I've pre-installed the power cable and I don't know, no, you won't be able to see it from that angle, but the bottom here uh, on um, Port number one, I believe it is. I've installed the uh, power, uh, no, not the power, the data cable. Um, I've got the uh, L-band one, so it's literally going out and in. I'll try and get a close up for you now in a second of that, uh, just before I install this. So we're gonna turn it around. I've done a little bit of cable management off camera. Another thing I've bought is uh, this uh, data traveler. Uh, this is uh, Kinston. 32 gigabyte, um, I don't know what on earth is going on my uh, display here, but my display keeps turning off. But uh, 32, uh, hopefully you can see that, I will may take a photograph. It's basically just a 32 gigabyte uh, stick. Um, the only stick I could find was a four gigabyte one and Windows requires eight or higher. That was four pound on Amazon, so Again, as everything else here, I'll leave uh, links uh, in the uh, description for you to have a look at current pricing if you want to. So altogether now, this is realistically looking like I spent about 800 pounds so far and I haven't changed the graphics card. The graphics card is still my original one. I do need to change it. Like I said before, I'm looking uh, for feedback from you guys as to which uh, graphics card to potentially go for. Um, like I said, I want, I'm kind of swaying towards a used uh, RX 580 because the graphics card market is a bit 
Hmm, don't know at the moment. So either used uh, RX 580, you can get them for anywhere between 130 and 150 pounds at the moment. Uh, as I'm chatting away here, I'm looking for my screwdriver. Uh, I can see it now. So about 150 odd pounds, either that or a brand new um, uh, Vega 56. Because uh, you can get them now for what, about 280 or so pounds, something like that. And you obviously get free, free games with them as well. So that in a sense is probably worth about 50 quid right there or higher. I haven't actually had a good look at how much the games are. So there's me chatting away just to burn time as I uh, find a screwdriver to get this. So here we go. And I've just realized I'm going to need to find the screws to go in here, which I believe was in with the motherboard bag so bear with me right okay so we have some new screws to hand so let's just open this packaging get the drive out again brand new drive from amazon cost me 63 pounds 51 i believe and Toshiba, three terabytes, 7,200 RPM, 64 megabyte buffer um, for installing a few programs and um, my files be more than enough. And I just realized something. I just got screws and these have actually got incense uh, little bits for you to just prop your drive in. And I want to make sure this is at this end. So everything at the moment is correct. And just like that, the drive is now installed. I'm gonna install a few screws at the bottom here though, just to uh, you angle. Right, let's just swing the camera. Sorry about the panning. Very unprofessional, I know. So I'll just screw one of these in and you'll get the gist down for the rest of it. That's one tight. Go corner to corner as CPU, not that it actually matters. Right, I'll unscrew the other two off camera. Okay, I was still recording there. Hopefully I'll cut that out. Uh, all four screws are in. We'll just get the hooks here. Um, in the side here, um, you can't see that very well. Let's see if I can pull around here. Uh, yeah, you can just see there's like two little bits here. That's where they go in, and then obviously the screw uh, to screw on the chassis itself. So, plunk that in like so. And I just realized what that screw was that I put away just now. So, I'm going to grab a screw and we will install this like so so that'll go in like that and the screw i have put away so brb all right there we go screw is now in unfortunately the drivers um got to be installed this way because this is a glass panel so that's what i'm trying to do cable tied in as best as i can i found uh, my velcro uh, ties i'm not sure if i've already mentioned that I bought these a few years ago, so I put a couple already in. Uh, I've still got the ones that come with the motherboard, I believe these come with, either that or the case. All right, so the power, uh, these have got like an L, so you gotta make sure that they go in the correct way. So the little bit comes out here, is a little bit that goes out there. I'm just gonna use, uh, which one do I wanna use? I use, yeah, let's just use that one. I'm trying to get this uh, as best as I can, so it's nice and uh, so it looks nice at the same time. And you've got to be very careful that you don't break these as they go on. Uh, the problem is I've cable tied this section here. It's very tight now to get in the end down a little bit. There we go. Line them up and then push, and these is in. And the data cable. Um, what have I done with, well, oh, it's on my hand by you. All right, so again, has a little L, gotta line it up the correct way. And we will line this SATA cable up. In he goes, nice firm click. 
And now, essentially, that is everything installed. What we gotta do now is finish this cable uh, tidying up, uh, cable tidying, cable management up by here. And I will probably cut and we will come back to see what's done. As you can see, I've mostly done the top. Uh, the 24 pin, I've gone up a little bit there, so I've put a strap there and then I've come back down. This bit I'm a little bit worried about with the glass coming on there, but hopefully it'll be fine. And then everything else will come down here. This, I was gonna try and come around here. This is the uh, 24 pin uh, power cable. I was gonna try and come down and around, but it just doesn't. It was like coming down here, and I thought the best way is probably down there. Fan cables are coming down the side and around. More fan cables down and into the fan module at the bottom. Uh, power cable for the fans is across the bottom to here. With the uh, Molex plugged in for the power and there's more fan cables coming down and across the bottom. This is where I'm going to try and stick these now, uh, i.e. like so down there. And you know what? It might even be easier me removing the drive and we will come back afterwards to see the finished product as I am pushing this in like so. I'm trying not to snag, because uh, the last thing you want to do is snag um, any cable and break it basically. So there we go. I managed to push that lot under there. Right, we'll come back after this. Right, so that was actually a little easier than I thought. So the uh, power cable, I've managed to stick down here. You can just see two connectors at the bottom here. The data cable, I decided to bring it up, as you can see here. I've uh, gone under there for up and down, and by here I've sort of like gone in and then out for the looping. So I hold it in place, and there's no snagging and anything. And I'm hoping this might actually be a small issue, but I'm hoping all of that will push in when we stick the temper glass side panel on. Um, I'm going to pre-test this before I pull off uh, any of the um, uh, sticky back clear plastic to protect it. And I'm holding that there and it's already been pushed out a little bit. So, hmm, let's uh, try this. Oh, actually, okay. That may just work. Maybe. Right, so we push in there. Can we push in at top? Just. Oops, right in. Let's try it. First insist, inside clear plastic. Yeah, that was a bit of a fail, but try not to get too many uh, fingerprints on the inside. And then, thumb screw, dead center. Oh, I just realized it's clear plastic. Let's do the corners then. Peel it back a little bit. One corner, peel that back. But I can push this all the way in up here. So that's how I'm pushed all the way in. Now the bottom is being kicked out a little here. Oh, it's, it's there, but the cables are pushing against it. Hmm. Let's install it and we'll find out. I'll come back after this. Right, I may fast forward through all of that now, um, or I may cut. All right, so all six are in, it is stable. I'm not gonna fully peel it yet because I don't wanna get too many fingerprints on there. But now, let's flick it around to the business end, the end that we all see, and 
again, as we've done earlier on, let's peel the back end of this. So there we go, that's that end off. Hopefully it's not too noisy on the earphones. I do apologize if it is. See, this one just slots straight in because there's nothing pushing against it. All right, so let's get all six of these in. And again, I'll be back afterwards. So that's now the case put together. Let's peel him. Ooh. And finally, the last panel. Oop. Hopefully that's not too loud for you. There we go. One finished build. And I quite like it. Let's turn them on. And we'll find out. Well, let's set the power on. So there you go, there is my build. I hope you like it, I'm over the moon. The hard drive is currently going crazy because I've only just installed it and done nothing with it. So it's trying to read and what I'm gonna do now is plug the monitor back in and install Windows and we'll get this all set up. Sorry for the, the uh, long video. Um, if you like this uh, build, give me a thumbs up, leave some comments down below. Uh, you can find me on Discord. I've got a Discord server I've done for a long time. Links are in the description. Same as links for all the parts that I used in this, all my social media such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, by the way, Welsh21 and basically everything. Um, so yeah, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down if you disliked it, um, and let me know. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as well as the bell icon if you want updates. Thank you all for watching and ciao for now everyone.